All right, so what we have here is a solid, and it has a circular base of radius 3. If every plane cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is an equilateral triangle, what is the volume of the solid? All right, so here's a picture of it. Now, notice the orientation of the x and y axis. It's a little bit different, but it's um, this way so you can kind of see how the solid is formed. It's not a cone. But if you can imagine this equilateral triangle moving um, uh, along the x-axis, and as it moves this way, it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. If you see, you see, it would be at its tallest, like right here. See if I can do that. That's a horrible line. And then down the side there. I guess I should have done that right here. Let me get rid of that. So the, 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 the greatest height would be along there, and then its bottom would be along the y-axis. And then as it moves in this direction towards us here, it's forming, it's, it's leaving a path of solid, solidness and forming this odd-looking solid. Okay, So that's important to understand right there. And then here's a view from, from the top, um, if you will. Okay, So let's take a look at that on um, more of a traditional axis here. Uh, let me get both arrows. So I'll do that. And I'll do this. Okay. And then I'm going to I'm going to draw a picture of the base here. Let's make it pink. So I'll center the circle there. Okay, so we're, we're looking down essentially, um, and then um, if we're looking down directly from the top, then um, imagine uh, that this is where, let's, let's just say it's this triangle, it seems to be like it's about here. Okay, so that's the top of the triangle. Okay, and again, this is going to be the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So let's get some, let's, let's realize a few things. First of all, the equation of this circle is um, x squared plus y squared is equal to um, 9 or the radius squared. Remember they tell us that the radius is 3, so right here well, this is 3 and this is negative 3. So what would be happening um, uh, in reference to this pic picture is think of the triangle moving from left to right this way and forming this solid. And again, we're looking from the top. Okay, so <clears throat> if this is the case, then we know that from here to here is y because it's going to have an x and y coordinate. So that length is y, as is this length. Now, I'm not, the, the length is y, and if, but the coordinate would be negative y. So I'm not saying, um, I'm just, you, it's, I'm, it's not negative because I'm using it as a distance. Okay. So what does this triangle look like? Um, let me get a shape here. Where's my equilateral triangle? It is not, oh, there it is. Okay. So let's make it blue, and I'll draw it here. That seems about, that seems pretty good. I just want to make it big enough. Okay, so it's not exactly the same size. Okay, so um, now I'm looking at the triangle from the front, and just so, again, we have an idea um, of what's happening here, I'm going to put in the axes. Um, I'm going to make them pink. Put an arrow here. So it's it's moving along this way. So that's this axis right here. And then the y-axis would be somewhere behind it, something like that. Okay. Um, just want to make sure you know. And this would be centered. I'm not quite sure if that's the center. I'll make that point a little bit better. This is y. And so I know from here to here is y, and that's, that's this y right here. 
And then if I drop a perpendicular from the vertex, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll make it dashed and no arrow. Okay, so if I drop a perpendicular right here, I've got that. Okay, and let's go here. So that's perpendicular. It's an equilateral triangle, so I know that this is 60 degrees or pi over 3. And if that's the case, I have the 30, 60, 90 triangle relationship where the longer leg is equal to the shorter leg multiplied by root 3. So this height here is root 3 times y. Okay, so now I can get the area of this triangle. Um, yeah, I'll do it up here. The area of this triangle is equal to 1 half times y. Uh, uh, actually times 2y, sorry, the, the length of the entire base, because from here to here is y, again from here to here is y, and from here to here corresponds to right here. So 1 half times 2y times the height, root 3y. Okay, But we are moving along the x-axis, so we need to get this in terms of x. Well, how do we do that? Well, this um, <coughs> y-coordinate is dependent upon x, and if I solve this equation... I get y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. I should have said if I solve it for y, I get y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. So let's do some substitution. I should have, let's see if I can move this over here. I need a little more room to work with it. All right. Okay. All right, so now using substitution, I now have that the area of this triangle is equal to 1 half times 2 times the square root of 9 minus x squared. And I'm just replacing y with square root of 9 minus x squared. I guess I can just do these kind of parentheses. Times root 3 times, again, y is square root of 9 minus x squared. And let's simplify that. And uh, 1 half times 2 is 1. The square root of 9 minus x squared times the square root of 9 minus x squared is 9 minus x squared. So the area turns out to be square root of 3 multiplied by 9 minus x squared. Okay? And again, that is this area of the cross section of this triangle, of any triangle. And if I could infinitely add those up as this triangle moves across the x-axis all the way back from negative 3 to positive 3, so it starts way back here and moves all the way to here, and I add the, that infinite number of triangles, I add those areas, I'm going to get the volume. Well, how do I do that? I do that with integration. So the volume is going to be equal to um, the integral from negative 3 to 3 of the formula we got for the area of that cross section. So that's root 3 times 9 minus x squared dx. Okay, and then we're going to integrate like it's 1999. So this is going to equal root 3 times 9x minus x cubed over 3, evaluated from negative 3 to 3. Okay, and then that equals uh, root 3. Um, I'm going to plug in 3 here. 9 times 3 is 27. Minus 3 cubed is 27, so minus 27 over 3. Minus, uh, plugging in a negative 3, that gives me negative 27. Uh, minus a, let's see, negative 3 cubed, so that's going to be a negative 27 over 3. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so that's going to equal root 3. Let's see, 27 minus 9 is going to be 18. This minus, minus. Okay, uh, negative 27 minus a negative 9 is equal to negative 27 plus 9, so that's going to be minus 18. 
Ooh, things are looking good here. And then I think you can see that we get um, root 3, 18 minus a negative 18 is 36, which we would write as 36 root 3. 3, let me write that 3 correctly. All right, not so bad. Hope you enjoyed it. I am out.